All right, we are full-time spring, it's 2024. I'm gonna go through five patterns that we would recommend you have in your box this spring. Springtime means a lot of things, but in this video, I'm gonna go through a list of five of the patterns that we would recommend most anglers have in their boxes, especially at the beginning of spring, but also throughout spring and into high water. Um, at the end, this is probably one of the most underrated flies that I have in the bunch, but I think is imperative to have in your box for spring. So let's go through them all. All right, first off, and this is true across many of the tailwaters across the country and around the world for that matter, and that is you have to have a good selection of betas or blue-winged olive uh, mayfly patterns in the spring. They typically come off the strongest in the spring. And for the, a lot of the tailwaters that I fished, if you don't have a good betas dry fly pattern or you, if you skip that one, you're missing, on some, missing out on some of the greatest dry fly fishing of the entire year in a lot of cases. One of my favorites, and this has been true for probably the last two years, is Davey McPhail's Quill Body CDC Done. Now, number one, I like tying these myself, and we have a video tutorial for them as well on our website, and we'll link that below, as well as links to any of these flies, so you can check them out. But uh, I like this one. If you haven't fished CDC as a dry fly, a material for a dry fly, I, and, and I was, Took me years to really adopt this style of uh, dry fly, but they float incredibly well. And they're not uh, as lightweight so that they can't support a dropper, which is also another advantage. You do have to treat them with a good dry fly floatant that works well with CDC, but they float well, they land lightly on the water, and they can kind of skitter like a normal mayfly would. So if you do have to mend uh, during the drift, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, typically because rather than get drug under, they're going to skip across. So this pattern, in fact, just yesterday, I was fishing a really good beta hatch, and um, I learned the week before when I was fishing a beta hatch, I kind of trying different patterns out, more of a R&D experiment, and the, the McPhail's CDC done, outperformed the rest of them by quite a big margin um, out of the ones I tested. And yesterday I went straight to that pattern. That's the only one that I fished all day and it just wrecked the fish. So when it comes to dry fly betas, that McPhail's pattern is one of my go-tos. Now, if you've seen some of our other videos, I've talked about number two, which is the beadhead bar merger. Uh, over the last, gee, it's probably almost 30 years that I fished this pattern. Uh, by far and away, probably my most effective dropper nymph but also any nymph in general, um, if I'm fishing during a hatch, especially springtime in the betas hatch, as well as the PMDs, because betas and PMDs, they're gonna be all over in the water column, uh, whether they're hatching, like right now with betas, or closer to the end of spring when the PMDs start to rock. Um, the beadhead bar emerger can really pass as both, and that's why I think it's such an awesome uh, betas nymph and emerger pattern. So I will fish these from the beginning of the hatch, kind of on the bottom, and then work my way up until my, maybe it's using a dry dropper or even a little small indicator and a dropper with beadhead bar emerger. I think it's good because it just overall represents those small, kind of darker, but two-tone color uh, mayfly nymphs. So that's a good one. Now, as we progress in the hatch or in the spring, we have hatches, like I said, betas. But there's also one thing that becomes more prevalent in the spring, especially as the water levels begin to rise, and that would be aquatic worms. So we're not talking earthworms, but the squirmy wormy, and there are a lot of different flavors and variations of the squirmy wormy, I think are very good because number one, they're great searching patterns. If you find the match, the hatch matchy stuff's not working great, a squirmy is always a good one to tie on like that because it will give you uh, access to a lot of fish, from visibility standpoint, as well as uh, a lot of these have heavy beads so they can get down quick. And fish just sometimes can't leave them alone. I, we've, I've been out many times fishing and nymphing really techie stuff. You throw in a little squirmy or a big squirmy for that matter, and the fish just munch it. So it's probably not my first pattern as I go to uh, Nympha River, but it is certainly one uh, top on the list. And as you can see in the links below, we'll have some variations, but uh, I would say always have a, at least some version of a squirmy wormy in your box, even if you're doing dry droppers. Squirmies are great for dry droppers. Okay, now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. In the springtime, most anglers, especially if you live around lakes or reservoirs, 
are probably going to do some level of still water fishing. If you fish still waters in the spring, then you have to have some type of good coronamid pattern. Now, coronamids in a river, coronamids in a lake, same overall type of bug. Generally speaking, in lakes and reservoirs, those are going to be a little larger. So this traffic light buzzer, which is a great overall pattern for any uh, coronamid infested lake or reservoir, which is pretty much all of them, um, is good because it's got the orange hotspot, which I'm really key with on uh, coronamids in general, but it's also got a good um, imitative color scheme. So if you look at coronamids, they start as blood worms, so they're more uh, green or red as they're down in the bottom of the, the lakes or reservoirs and the bottom in the detritus. And then they will, as they emerge, start to kind of take on uh, less of the red color, gain more of the black, and then as they pupate and, and start to emerge, uh, a lot of kind of heavy silver. But this traffic light buzzer incorporates kind of all three of those potentially. So you could fish it right on the bottom, you could fish it mid-column, you could also fish it right beneath the surface as a dropper. Um, I love this because if you're going to tie it, it's an easy tie. But as a coronamid general, over you know, even if you're not super techy on coronamids, this is a good pattern to have because it's going to work pretty much anywhere. You may just adjust the sizing a little bit. Um, not a big deal, uh, which is why I like this because it's very universal in its nature. Okay, now finally, and this is where I think a lot of people, um, especially when you're nymphing, they forget about this style of pattern, and that is a stonefly uh, nymph, and specifically we're talking a Pat's rubber legs. Uh, similar to say a squirmy, a Pat's is going to have a variety of different styles of imitations. It's going to have different colors. But one thing to know is that uh, salmon or stoneflies, and also salmon flies, they'll be in the water 24 seven. They're, they're in the water all year, all year round. The nymphs are available for the fish, even right now in the springtime, where you wouldn't necessarily equate a big stonefly hatch with the spring in most areas, unless you're talking maybe squalas and things like that, winter stones. Uh, but I'm talking times where fish are really keen on them. However, if you present a nice stonefly nymph drifted properly, even in the winter, the fish will recognize and eat them. We did a, an entomology video a while back, you can search that up, uh, where we talk about the availability of some of these other insects in the water uh, outside of what you would typically associate with the season. So I would say spring especially, because we have some big things happening in the spring. Number one, the water temps typically warm up. What does this do? This just increases the, the fish's um, a capability to go out or wanting to go out and search for food. They, they become more active. And so searching out big, uh, juicy meals is something that's on their list, say more than it would be in the winter. So stoneflies and other big nymphs like the, the squirmy are going to be vital to have in your arsenal. So I would always have a good mix of, of stoneflies, depending of course where you're fishing, um, in the spring, even though you're not actively seeing stoneflies hatch. So there you have it. This is a good mixture. Notice that most of these are nymphs outside of the betas pattern. As spring progresses into early summer, we start to talk about a lot more dry fly opportunities. But I think in the spring, um, focus on those betas, but focus on the nymphs. Fish are spending most of their time. And again, as their metabolism rises, they start to seek out more food in the spring. You, you'll probably want to start to vary your offerings and know that they could switch from, say, a a stonefly bite to a betas bite pretty quickly. So it's always a good idea to have a variety of the different nymphs, especially uh, betas where they're hatching and, and you're gonna get some dry fly opportunities. But anyway, check these out in the links below. Check us out at flyfishfood.com and good luck with these on the water. They're excellent to have in your box.